Hello and welcome everyone, I'm Lazy Grouse and in this video we're taking a look at all the units and mechanics of the Vampire Coast in SFO Grimhammer 2. So first up we have the boarding crew that is available to all Vampire Coast factions except for Aranessa. She got her own new units with, you know, a pulse. But the boarding crew is a hybrid infantry unit that is pretty decent at both melee and at range, but it doesn't look like it since it's got a low armor, low melee defense and average attack and damage both at range and at melee. But when you start looking at their abilities, they start looking a lot better. They got Midnight Cutlass, which gives them 200% more melee and ranged AP damage as long as they're above 50% HP. And they have Extra Powder, which has been buffed in SFO by the way, for an additional 50% range damage while above 80% ammo. So their damage goes from pretty mediocre to pretty damn good with good AP. But they're kind of a glass cannon unit. So to fix this, they have damn deadlights that increases their melee defense and missile resistance when they drop below 50% HP, so they turn into a fairly sturdy frontline unit once they've taken some damage. They also have vicious souls, which boost their leadership as long as you got a good amount of mana. So not only are they a hybrid unit, they also have two different roles as a frontline unit. They can deal some great damage on the approach with very good ranged attack, and then in melee with good melee damage. But they take damage quickly, so when they drop below 50%, they just switch their role to a fairly sturdy frontline unit that holds the line pretty well instead. Instead of the boarding crew, Aranessa got Sortosa pirate mercenaries and they fill a very similar role to the boarding crew. They have better armor, leadership speed and melee defense, but lower ranged ammo and health. But they also don't have the abilities that the boarding crew have. They do have extra powder, so they will get some extra damage on the ranged attack, but they still deal less damage than the boarding crew. But they compensate with better stats that don't rely on abilities, and they can shoot in a 360 degree arc so they can skirmish a bit. But overall, they're kind of the living version of the boarding crew. Aranessa also got the Sartosa Norskan Raiders, which is an anti-infantry infantry unit, and they're basically Norskan Marauders with very similar stats, but with a big increase in damage and anti-infantry, so they can cut through most early game infantry units. They don't have very high armor or melee defense, so they will take a fair bit of damage doing so, but as long as they survive for a bit, they will just become more and more dangerous with Berserk, which will increase their melee attack, speed, physical resistance and vigor the longer they stay in battle. Not that they need the vigor, since Rowdy gives them perfect vigor and a small leadership boost as long as their leadership is above wavering. And they also have Weathered Storm for some missile resistance as long as they're in combat. Next we have the Sartosa and Grapeshot Carronade, and as the name suggests, it is also exclusive to Sartosa, and it's absolutely insane against infantry. The range is a bit shorter than the ordinary Carronade, but the damage is really good. It is divided over 10 projectiles however, so it's unlikely to get all the projectiles to hit since the spread is pretty big, especially over a long range. But the projectiles that do hit does some great damage and with a 20 bonus versus infantry on each projectile it is particularly good against infantry. But it also have extra powder so the first couple of shots deals an extra 50% damage so they can just delete infantry units when they approach if they get a good hit. The final units that the Vampire Coast got is not exactly new, but you couldn't recruit them. It's the ghost variants of the Bretonian Knights that Silostra Direfin can summon. They're all available to be recruited, but as you might expect, they're exclusive to Silostra. They're all basically the same as the Bretonian Knights, except ethereal, so they don't have the armor, but instead got a high physical resist, lower health, and magical attacks. The Knight Errant are a great shock cav early on, with the Lance Formation to boost their charge bonus at the cost of melee defense. The Knights of the Realm is a great late game shock cap that you kinda need to cycle charge to really get the most out of their 100 charge bonus. And they're especially great against large units like monsters or other cav with bonus versus large, and they got the lance formation to really boost their great charge bonus. The Questing Knights are also a very good late game cav, but they fill a very different role than the Knights of the Realm. You really don't have to cycle charge them as much, and they can be left in sustained combat for a bit longer with them having slightly better stats and damage, but a much lower charge bonus. They also have some bonus versus infantry instead of bonus versus large, so they're better used to clear out infantry units. And like the others, they have the Lance Formation to boost their charge bonus. And that's all the units, so let's get to the campaign mechanics. So let's start with the things that affect all the sub-factions. In the new mechanic, the Black Market, you can buy and sell Infamy if you need to climb the Infamy shard quickly, or you just got more Infamy than you need and just rather trade it away. Buying Infamy will always cost 10,000 gold for 1,000 Infamy and comes with a pretty strong buff of your choice. Selling Infamy, however, does not give you gold. You get a strong buff instead. So it's not so much selling Infamy as it is buying a buff with Infamy. But if you got excess infamy, it's pretty worth it since these are some strong buffs. The sea shanty's got some changes and now gives some strong passive buffs to your faction and gets stronger for each shanty, which gives you a better incentive to collect them if you aren't interested in Aminar. The shanties themselves have also been changed to a 3 stage buff. 
They have also got some new horde buildings as well. The ship structures now have an additional option for each category, but you can only build one of each, so you have to choose what effect you want from your sail, helm, hull and anchor. They have also got new buildings for their normal settlements. They got the secret path chain which gives movement in the local area, bonus gold from raiding in adjacent provinces, less attrition during siege and more income from adjacent provinces. The Admiral's Mansion generates infamy, character recruit rank, leadership at sea faction wide, hero capacity, some protection from enemy hero action, recruit rank for units, bonus sacking income from faction wide and global recruitment. Treasures from treasure maps will also have better rewards in them now, so you're more incentivized to go treasure hunt with your characters now. They have also gotten a little bonus for finishing the Amanar campaign. Once you beat the final quest battle, you get some faction-wide buffs and all your armies get the ability Amanar's Wrath during combat, which creates a bunch of vortexes that can deal a lot of damage. Luther Harkon got some bonuses to his zombie pirate deckhands and gunnery mob. In his own territory, they get some sneaky tactics as they know the terrain so they get vanguard. And while in enemy territory, they all get perfect vigor for some reason. So combat can play out quite differently depending on where you fight. He also got some unique technologies under the Pirate King category that give some nice bonuses to all characters when you research the different technologies. They all have some quest-like requirements so you can get some juiced up characters if you try to complete all the objectives. And with lead cannon shot, you can make a character doomstack pretty easily. Count Noctilus gives all his units a special ability during combat called Bloody Wave that triggers when they've taken some damage. It causes an explosion that knocks enemies away and debuffs them for 30 seconds. The debuff effect varies by unit type. Infantry lowers damage, ranged units lower armor and monster units lowers leadership. Aranessa haven't gotten anything new to her campaign really, except for the new units, but since they got almost all the new units, I guess her SFO mechanic is a bunch of units that the other sub-factions don't have access to. As mentioned earlier, Silostra got the ability to recruit the Bretonian Ghost Knights, and her unique Bretonian Ghost Paladin also got a skill line that buffs the Knights, increases their capacity and gives some faction-wide buffs, so he's more than just a beatstick now. So overall, the Vampire Coast Legendary Lord haven't gotten as much as other factions in SFO Grimhammer, but the additions are pretty fun, I especially like the boarding crew. But that is all for now, so thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed the video consider leaving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye!